So we're finally back in Way the Hunter and we are returning to Nesbur's Valley. The quest to find the new 5-star Meliorax goes on, and I know for sure that I've passed at least one day here on Nez Perce. I'm pretty confident an age cycle has not occurred, so the first part of this hunt will be kind of going around still checking some other areas that we've not been to, but best I can tell, none of these mule deer have changed, so I'm pretty sure we're still on the same age cycle as last time, so we'll hunt around, we'll try to hit every spot the mule deer can be, and then hopefully, in passing to another day, we can see an age cycle and maybe some of those four stars we spotted last time make it up to a five star. And so as we get going here, got a herd of mule deer with a couple of different bucks, two star mature that does look pretty young, and then a one star adult. So I can tell from here, the two star is one of the new racks. You can see those additional tines, a little bit higher, tighter set. I think he is uneven though. And maybe just because of that, because I want to take a look at it, maybe we try to take him out. It's almost exactly at our zero in range. He is going to trot a little bit closer, and now we can see it for sure. He is definitely uneven. He's got that additional split on his left side. I'm going to try to get like a neck shot, I guess. Don't think we got it. Follow up from the 270 should be enough to get him down. It looks like that will drop him. So luckily we had the quick follow up ready. And again, we get to see this kind of new antler. I really love the double split. And I think that is one that I've seen in the community now. A five star with that double split. So we did shoot just to the side of the neck. We got a lung hit. So I think it would have brought him down anyway. Second shot happened to hit him in the heart. That was pure luck. Got him down a little bit more quickly. 74% up here isn't bad. Typically, it's this lake with the campsite right at it. All the way like the north center of the map. Typically, we don't get anything special from Mule Deer here at all, so kind of encouraging to see maybe our genetics improving. That's a pretty nice looking elk. There's a couple of pretty nice, holy, are there three? That's a four star. So kind of a bummer we didn't come up here a little bit sooner. That, wait, is that the same four star? There's a ton of big elk in there. We gotta keep an eye on them. That's gotta be a five. That's super wide. That one looked huge. I don't even know. <laughs> We're going to have to just watch where they go to and try to sneak in closer and spot them. There, I'm, I'm pretty confident there's one, maybe two five stars in there. And I do think they're probably going to slow down somewhere up there in view. Also, for whatever reason, there's a cow elk right there. But, going to keep an eye on them. going to try to sneak into range. Where I was trying to go was down to this lake. We've had mule deer and whitetail there in the past. And go figure, we get stopped by some fleeing elk calls, basically. And there's a couple of really, really solid ones in there. So that's a four star. That's a five star. And there's at least one or two, there's a four star there. I thought there were four big ones. But we know that guy there is a five. So was it just the one then? It may have been. No, there is. Hold on. There's two standing side by side, I guess? And I don't have the newer scope on the 300, which is kind of unfortunate. One of those bulls back there is a five. And that one's a five. Okay, I really wish I had the bow. But if we go back, they're going to return to wherever they came from. So we're going to stick with what we have. And we're going to... I guess try to pick whichever one gives us a better shot first and then follow the herd. So that five just turned broadside. He's 200 yards away. It's going to be a really tight window shot. We're kind of between the tree and the rock. But if he takes another step, that shot is gone. So... Tuck that in behind the shoulder. Hopefully we got him. Uh, he looks like he was dipping his head, so I believe we did. And I want to keep an eye on... I think it's got to be that one. We could almost... I'm not going to risk it. We could almost just get him there. Did we even get the first one, though? Now I don't know what's what, and I'm too afraid to just send a shot at one of them. I mean, that they're the same frame. Do we somehow not punch through to a lung? I don't have a clue what's going on. That got whatever bull that was. <laughs> I sure hope it was one of the fives. That could be a mistake, but what happened? I don't understand. So now we get to try to make sense of this. There's pink blood there. 
which frankly I'm not even sure that has to be after the second shot I'm not sure how that worked where we marked it I probably should have paid better attention and what a terrible place to have to track a good bolt looks like they stopped right up in that area so that's gonna be key let's move that marker there's somewhere right up there so not only do we gotta try to track this on this cliff face basically that's gonna certainly help us we gotta do so fairly quietly because I think the elk are just over that hill. So here's this bull. I don't want to call him a five star because I don't know. But I thought the frames were separate. Honestly, I don't know at this point. Let's just pick him up and see. Oh, that's the one. Ha. Okay. So we just shot between the gap and the ribs that basically had us just hit the liver. And we didn't get enough of the lung, even though we got the right lung kind of as it passed through, to bring him down. I knew that shot was a touch far back because his leg was back, but we just couldn't afford to push that shot much further forward. What are the odds then? Did we hit him in the left lung on the follow-up? And that brought him down. 98%. He didn't look that big to me. What is his total score? Only 467. So... Do we let the other one go? The problem is, that doesn't mean he's 98 plus percent. He could still be, you know, 89 percent and at his absolute peak. So I think we gotta go and get him. I don't even know what we're gonna do with these things. Like, we don't have space in the lodge for more elk, quite frankly, but it's not like I wanna just let him go. So we're gonna try to creep around the edge here and see if we can get eyes on him. I think we might have found him. They are 700 yards over there. So I had the right area marked? Yeah, that's got to be the same herd. There's two big bulls there. I can see another good one back there. So they're kind of sneaking back down around towards this lake. Now, elk drink time is over. I think they're maybe just trying to get back to wherever maybe they should be next. But this could work in our favor. I'm going to go ahead and remove that so it's not in the way. Going to mark out in front of them. And I think we're going to very quickly try to get to a vantage point. We want to be kind of up high. I wonder if going up and around could work. I think we're going to try that. I think we've got ourselves the perfect spot. That's the five star. And I just want to make sure. Four star there. And four star somewhere. Four star there. So making sure we got the right herd and that there were only two. If we can get a good broadside angle. And I want to wait for like a good one. So we don't have that same situation again. We'll go ahead and try to punch this through. Right now, they're kind of feeding almost underneath us. So maybe we can just maneuver into a decent spot. I think they might be onto us. We've managed to drop elevation considerably. So the angle's not as steep. And he's kind of still walking behind these trees. That's going to be him there. If he'll just stand broadside, there's all these bodies in the way. But we've got a, we've got a good angle for this. Just needed to work out. He's the one kind of in the front. There's two bulls side by side there, darn near. I don't think that got him. I'm kind of surprised that it didn't. And now I don't know for sure which is which. Again, I can't believe we're going to have this twice. But I just, I'm afraid to take that shot not knowing which was which. That's him there. So, can we get any kind of reasonable follow-up? Should be that one? So difficult to, to keep track when there's multiple big bulls. I'm just, I'm confused. We had to have hit along. Oh, I think we were just late. We might have clipped him. <laughs> That's not the way we normally get five stars, but we've spent enough time chasing elk around while we're supposed to be going after mule deer. Oh boy. That I think just getting him down is probably the move. As I said, I don't even know what we're going to do with them. But that that is really interesting. And I'm curious. I've kind of noticed maybe moose are a little bit tougher than they used to be. Maybe elk are too. And maybe we shouldn't be going for, you know, anything but perfectly broadside, double lung opportunity shots. Because I felt like what we did should have worked and would have worked in the past. I will be curious to see how many times we actually hit him. Because it felt like it may have been three or four. Looks like three. Oh, we hit him in the spine. How do we end up that high? 
Maybe we just were. I'm surprised that didn't drop him, though. Because we hit with good energy. I mean, we're looking at, at the time, about 3,400 joules. For that to not take him down is crazy. Follow-up shot. Yeah, I knew we clipped him somewhere. We hit him in the leg. And then the third shot finally actually hit him in the spine again. Not exactly the way you draw it up. He was a 99%er, so I'll tell you right now, we should have let him go. After all that, 471 could have been much, much bigger. Like I said, you just can't know. The frame isn't going to be any different on a 461 that is an 89%er, or a 461 that's a 99%er and has longer to go. So it's now almost 3 p.m. I think we'll go back to the lodge, see if we can get those elk placed, and we should be good to rest forward to a new day. And maybe that'll pass to another age cycle. I'm not certain, but I think it should. So about the only thing we can do is try to put elk like in these spots, and I, I think they're going to end up clipping. Maybe looking a little bit to the side helps. I'm just pretty sure that's going to go through the roof, and uh, actually, it fits <laughs> just barely. Not so sure the same could be said for this spot, but we will try it, and in this case, we actually want this mouth that's looking a little bit to the other side. Does that fit? Now look at that. Well, had we let them grow, they wouldn't have fit into those spots, so I'm not going to complain. Took a lot to get them both down. I think five hits in total between the two. But two more elk added lodge spots that I didn't think we'd be able to fill, because moose would kind of clip through the sides, bigger elk would clip. Anyway, we're going to jump down here, rest back to probably, I think we'll do 10, 40, whatever we're at now just to be before Mule Deer drink time, 10.47 a.m. it'll be. And let's see, do we have aging occurring or do we have another hour or so until we can rest forward one more time and then see aging? Because I know we gotta be close if not there now. That should confirm it. We did not have a four star in this herd. So I'm pretty confident aging has happened. Pretty decent looking buck there. And that guy's kind of wild looking. Was that the two star? Because if it was, I want to take that. And then we'll get down to diamond drill those areas and check on the four stars that we had. That is the two star. And as much as I'd like to go with the 270, we've seen some of these off angles not work. So I'm going to go 300 to get the extra power. That looks a little more like it. Turns out when the animal is hundreds of pounds smaller, the 300 does just fine. And definitely one of the more mismatched mule deer we've shot in a while. Double lunged him. So go figure got that just fine as well. 59% good to take that one out. Kind of cool looking still, but that left side is entirely different from the right. And when you see him side on, it really is notable, but let's go ahead and move on here. And I think we should go straight to Diamond Drill. I think there may have been a four star up in this area somewhere. We had three or four down here though. So we'll start with this and start to move around. There were a couple on public land we got to look at. Lots to do in a short period of time. So we're going to try to make the most of it. Well, there you go. A five-star muley on public land. However, he's atypical. He's not one of the new non-typical racks. I do believe he's a new rack, though. That is a frame that we didn't used to have. It's a little taller. It's a little, like, the forks are a little more, like, vertical, I guess. I'm not sure how to describe it, but I'm pretty darn confident that is a new typical rack for the muley. So... We're going to see if we can call him in. I'd like to maybe take him with the bow. Again, I didn't even think of grabbing the bow today, and I don't want to leave this spot. So we're going to bring him in close and try to get him with the 270, but definitely another one that I want to get some screenshots of. And I mean, just this view of it confirms to me this is a new frame. I've been thinking for a while with some of the four stars. We just didn't have this one before. And I think maybe the best thing, like the brow time's a little bit longer. The best thing is probably going to be compared to some others. That is an awesome looking typical mule deer. I have felt that all the old five stars we had were kind of similar. This is very much unique compared to them and something that I definitely thought we were missing. You see this a lot, I feel like, on bigger mule deer in real life. So good to see that. And I think it'll be even nicer to see when he's standing somewhere right up in this area. Pretty darn cool. I really like that frame. Curious to see where it's going to end up scoring. And if we can make this shot with the 270, we can very soon find out. The only question is going to be, will he clear this brush or do we got to call one more time? I think we're going to be good. 
and we're looking at a very close range shot. Through to the heart. Oh man, if he'd have stayed like that, that could have been such a nice photo. I really wanted him to keep like his head leaning, I guess that would have been to the right. Could have made it a little bit nicer because some of the antler is under the ground. But we're still gonna try to get something here. That was one thing I didn't consider. Should have let him take a couple more steps, but we'll make do. Honestly, kind of just a terrible spot though. That rock behind him really causes problems. So we're not gonna get too crazy here. We'll worry about maybe a better screenshot in the trophy lodge. Let's instead worry about what we have here. So hard shot from the 270, 45 yards away, nothing special there. Had to at least make one good shot on a five star. Look at that. Gonna try to get a decent screenshot maybe in the inspect screen, 92%. So not too bad for a public land buck. He is going to be 474. So somewhere right kind of in the middle. Pretty darn solid. So it's hard to say exactly how that's going to work in terms of, you know, how big or small this frame could end up being. But I like that it's not just like a 461. He's well above the minimum. And these like more V-shaped versus U-shaped forks. I just think that's something we haven't had and that we've been sorely missing for typical mule deer. Was hoping for, and maybe we'll still get, a non-typical five-star of the new racks. Got ourselves a typical one, and a few more spots still to check. Diamond Drill, by the way, none of those bucks hit five-star. There's still a four-star that maybe has another year in them, but I think there was one or two more down along the creek here on the main public land that at least had a shot at it, so we're gonna keep on heading south. It is a... Good thing that one made 5 star, because nothing else on this map seems to have either aged or they have aged and they've died. So, I think we're going to try to take this 1 star mature. Of course, he's going to try to trot over there. There's enough room. We don't need to rush this. Should get him with a 270 and hopefully only going to need the one shot. Got to make sure he doesn't come flying out of there. That got him. And I think that's going to be our last kill if for no other reason. The mere fact that I want to go and put that new 5 star on the wall somewhere next to an old 5 star and just kind of compare. It's something that I've been really looking forward to since the moment the new racks were announced and it's not even one of the, the specific ones that I wanted, but I still really like it. But one bonus buck, I was trying to figure we've only shot like six or seven animals today. Just three of them happen to be 5 stars, two elk and our one mule deer that we're gonna go and take a look at now. So we'll have to find a spot where we have a five star already mounted and then put the new one next to it. Just look at the differences because the more that I've kind of thought about it, the more I think those differences will show up. So I gotta take this one down just so we actually can easily compare, but I'm pretty sure it's going to do a good job of what we want. So we're going to do the exact same pose so that there's no differences there. We need the old five star from back in January. Good to see the dates are working properly. And if we just kind of back this up, and I think we'll have to use the camera with some FOV playing around to really see them both. I think that pretty well shows it. So it's like a more, let's hide this, a more gradual kind of dip in the forks. These are a lot more like straight down, straight back up. Longer brow times, as I mentioned, that's the, the biggest defining feature. I think this new 5-star has the longest brow times out of any 5-star mule deer we have. And we'll even take a quick walk through and see that. I thought he was taller than some of the old 5 stars, he's actually a little bit shorter and probably about the same width, but it's like pointier tines, again, the, the fork specifically, you can see those kinds of differences. And for all the 5 star mule deer we've shot, none of them look quite like that. We have a couple up here on this full body mount, you see really short kind of rounded brow tines. Got another one at the top of the stairs up here. You're going to see the exact same characteristics. Short brow tines, very gradual kind of dips. And then one other one here, just to show it, very much different than the one that we got today, and that is really cool. So looking forward to adding more 5-star muleys to this lodge. I will say as well, it was nice to add the two more 5-star elk. I think we saw 4-star four, four whitetail today in our search for the mule deer. So that is going to be something that we're after as well in the future hunts here on Nez Perce. Getting close to filling every single plaque outside of the small game ones, and maybe we'll have that done as we continue our search. So. I like this, this is actually something I've intended on doing anyway, like a wall of deer, getting to add to it with a new 5 star muley, and hopefully next time we put even more on that wall. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.